I don't feel bad for a single one of them because most of them are clout chasers, like Trevor, who had a girlfriend the whole time. Trevor, did he? Re- I, did he really? Yeah, Is that confirmed? Girlfriend. Because I like yes, Trevor. It's confirmed. Okay. Oh, yeah. Please, I didn't believe for one second that my my dude's favorite movie was The Notebook, and his favorite the thing notebook. is butterflies. Right. I went. Is his dog's name Chelsea? Didn't I think uh, that was true? Was that, that true? That was true, and he gave Chelsea, Chelsea that collar. And boy, Chelsea, was that Chelsea, funny. Chelsea, man, you girl, 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 she Chelsea. Anxious attachment. Oh boy, I can't believe you have friends. Thank you, by the way, for sharing all those TikToks because I was like, oh I my god, just I cannot cried stop. for half an hour of laughter. I'm, it I'm was still on them, still looking, very still. Funny. They're getting fed to me now because the algorithm knows what I want. I'm like, it's correct. <laughs> Love it. Anyhow, on to the topic at hand. Welcome to 99 at 25. I'm John Brooks. I'm Jen Tisdale. And in case you haven't guessed, we are recording this the very night that the uh, Love is Blind, After the Final Rose, whatever. Oh, are we keeping all of that in? I'll, enough for people to understand what the transition was anyway. Uh, okay. Maybe just, maybe just Chelsea videos. Go watch some Chelsea videos. Oh, my God. On TikTok, while you still can, because my friends, we may have, we, we might be living in a post TikTok world pretty soon. I'm very so. conflicted about this. On the one hand, I don't like fascism. On the other hand, I don't like no. anyone on TikTok. So, mm. <laughs> like with few exceptions, that is that's a real Sophie's choice. Yeah, I feel what a dilemma. Yeah, you know, what's a gal uh, to do? You know, me and Robert Frost, uh, two roads. What are we gonna do? I don't know. I'm not sure it's great politics to 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 for young voters to kill the thing they love the most. <laughs> They're so, not voting anyway. We don't need to pander to those uh, dum dums. Uh, there's lots of people on TikTok, from what I can tell. Yeah, the, there are, but the young ones—they're not voting anyway. They're already disenfranchised. Okay. They're already okay. exhausted. Yeah. Maybe been, they will be forced to watch political ads if they're not watching TikTok. And, uh, I mean, what we should all do is go back to appointment television, cable networks. <laughs> I watch. <laughs> I you know strip us down. Except I do get to keep my phone in my podcast. Okay, and that's yeah. it. Okay, that's all she wrote. We're getting CBS. We're getting NBC. We're getting ABC. We're getting Fox. Let's let's narrow down to an only podcast media environment. How about only that? pods? It's replacing OnlyFans. Sorry. Yep. Anyways, we're going to be looking at the first half of the Mar- uh, the month of March, 1999, and there is some fun stuff coming up and some stuff that relates to some news stories that are going around right now. One, as of today, which I can't wait to get to. So um, I did the first half this month. We're going to be looking at March the 1st through the 7th, and there is some interesting and fun stuff coming up here. But one of the things that I found really interesting was that as I'm looking through news stories and as I'm looking at events of the time, there are two kind of newsy things that are happening around this time. One of them involves the Senate race uh, in New York State between uh, Hillary one, Rodham Clinton, Hillary Rodham Clinton, and the guy that everyone's trying to get to run against her. One Rudolph Giuliani. Oh, America's mayor, but not America's mayor yet. Two years not... away from being America's mayor. Now he's just mayor. Now he's just the, the guy everybody fucking despises. Okay, it just occurred and to is me. Bad at something. Marrying. Something just occurred to me. Did Rudy yeah. Giuliani orchestrate 9 11 to like yes. be, he did, to become he America's mayor? That is one of the many uh, conspiracy theories, or that he was involved with the uh, deep state, Bush did 9-11 thing. Anyway, as of recording time today, Rudy Giuliani is apparently to have a second career as star of sex tape. So that's cool and fun. What a great movie that's going to be. Moving into... Uh, transitioning to porn is Rudy Giuliani. So now, did you hear about this? Who's done a porn? <laughs> I have no problem with that in general. I, I'm sure. all for it. Yes. Mm-hmm. However, Rudy Giuliani. We no. look, we welcome all bodies, even ones without okay. a soul. Okay. Even ones without a soul. <laughs> all, <laughs> all bodies are welcome here. Hey, listen, I'm not judging that. That's uh, it. But apparently, uh, this was leaked to all the media outlets. Uh, today that someone sent 
all the media outlets a Rudy Giuliani sex tape that they don't know what to do with. So interesting. Anyway, um, hope I never see that. The other thing. I mean, I'm the, obviously I'm Googling it right now. So yeah, we'll, you yeah. might see that in one second. Yeah. <laughs> so the other thing that is uh, hovering around the news sphere is Sarah Ferguson uh, around this time. Who is the original making, Fergie. The original Fergie, who's making a lot of noise about the way that the royal family treats, you know, people who marry into it. Interesting, uh, given that we are, do we, do we prefer, okay, so I have three options for you, right? One of them is, 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 is Kate Gate, which I just hate. Mm. The other one is Water Kate, which is like, th- that's better. That's I like Water Kate. On words. Water Kate's good. Uh, the one I prefer is the Middleton Affair, because that sounds like the sort of thing that back when scandals had class, they were called the so and so affair. You know, I mean, the Until first two are Watergate. are like a New York Post headline, but yeah, Watergate is obviously the better of the two. If you're going to go with the whole like Watergate is all scandals must be some derivation of Watergate. Now, uh, Watergate obviously makes more sense, but um, Kate Gate rhymes. The Middleton affair. The sounds Middleton affair really is also good. a play on words because of the what we've roped Lady Rose Hanbury back into this. Yeah. So there's the affair <laughs> that is the situation, and then there's the, the affair, affair that everyone thinks is some sort of reason why this is all happening is that he uh, is sleeping with her, has slept with one of her. I wouldn't say her oldest ladies friends. in waiting. <laughs> a good friend, a woman who married a man twenty five years her senior when she was 23 and he was right and you can see why she'd want to marry, why she'd want to sleep with a contemporary right as because she's married to this old fucking asshole um, i don't think he's bad he's okay I, I had to write about them this week he's i mean i didn't like all he i read giant tory isn't he like a gross i don't know about his political leanings because okay. the interviews they're all very private you know the british are very private so when i was trying mm. to write about their relationship specifically hilariously all i could find they live in this beautiful a, a state called like it's probably it's Houghton Hill, Houghton Hill, yeah, um, and it's right up the way from Kate, Kate and Wills. And there's only two articles about them where they were interviewed about the house. So they bonded over decor, which is nice. It's nice to have a thing that you yeah. can bond over. And they were both just like, he has good taste, she has good taste. Let's have three children, and that's it. But okay. I don't know okay. anything about his political leanings. I know that he was a filmmaker, but that was decades ago. So that makes me yeah. feel like he can't be a Tory, but that doesn't mean anything. I feel like I read that he was some gross. He fucking... might be, but he, he loves the arts. He's got an incredible. I mean, a lot of the Koch brothers love the arts. So you know what I mean? Right. Like, he's not... got, he was a filmmaker with like an incredible collection in this palatial mansion that apparently the children are allowed to roller skate around. Okay. That's okay. What I learned. Okay. Um, what the fuck's happening? So look, I, I, I resisted the Kate Middleton conspiracy theory nonsense until the photo. And then I'm like, what the fuck is like, what the fuck is happening here? What is we're having a good time? Out? Here's what's happening. We're having a good time. I'm and confused. Hu- <laughs> and hilariously, the British media is getting all silly about it. Uh, they're like, you should leave her alone. I was like, uh, you, you people killed. <laughs> Do you know who you are? You yeah. killed Diana. How dare you? <laughs> we're not going to leave anything alone. And poor um, Sarah Ferguson. And we're just having fun. Team Sarah Ferguson. I am genuinely worried. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, this, like, I'm yeah, really concerned too. about this. Like, uh, uh, yeah. Just like for everybody involved. This is mm-hmm. fucking weird. I mean, weird. her children, and... who I assume she ha- they, they have a pretty good relationship as far as royals yeah. go with their children. They seem to be as hands-on as royals can possibly be sure. yeah. uh and i'm um, you know i don't think we've seen much of them since all of this uh, not that we do but there's certainly william has been at everything it's hard for him to bow out yeah but obviously she's not been seen since christmas day properly in a proper appearance and then suddenly we're supposed to believe that she's you know been futzing around with photoshop during that time the you royal who, family won't let her fart without permission. I'm finding it very hard to believe that they're like, yeah, just fuck around with Photoshop. See what see what shakes out. We'll put it up. Yeah. And then, and then the kill. You know, you know who else hasn't been seen since Christmas Day? Santa Claus. No, oh, he's think about that. They're, they're then they're together. That? They're together. Listen, at this point, 
She's having an affair with Santa Claus. <laughs> William's having an affair with Listen, Lady Rose Hanbury. Is it? Is it? Is it plausible? No. Is it the least plausible thing that's been suggested? Also, no. So you know. I bet she likes gifts. Who doesn't? I think she likes free shit. I, you know, Santa, big free shit guy. She lives for free on like gets lots of. It seems like a match made in heaven. Let's be yeah. honest. Anyways. Uh, have you found the sex tape yet, or are you still just... No, all I came up was that August thing from, like, which I knew about from, like, August 2023, when he was, like, recorded with, uh, there was, like, a recording of him with, I yeah. think, a sort of saying some very upsetting things to a woman. Her yeah. name was Noelle Dumphy. I did know about that, but I haven't seen anything today. It's on social media. The uh, The actual, like, press has not figured out what to do with it yet apparently so it's oh, still I see. people yeah 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 anyhow uh so rudy giuliani and sarah ferguson uh back back then the more things change the more they stay the same or whatever march the second uh we got we got a couple of things in um in the music world the the share song believe reaches number one on the billboard hot 100 making share the oldest female artist at the age of 52 to perform this feat share also set the record for the longest hit making career span with 33 years between the releases of her first and last billboard hot 100 singles 1965 and 19 99. I do remember when that came out. I do remember, even though I was not like a huge share um, person, that was mm-hmm. a big deal. So she was yeah. back. And the song yep. was incredibly fun. Yeah, it's not bad. I, I hate the auto tune thing. No, um, that part's very bad. Yeah. It became an instant meme like there's also there's that there's that buffy episode where she goes to college and her roommate is a literal demon and she plays that song constantly and you know (laughs) and this was like around the exact time Um, the college years i don't want to get us into a tangent but okay did you see me somebody had like tweeted who would who like i think which television character which fictional character would have been at january 6 and somebody uh tweeted riley (laughs) And I said, that's true. <laughs> that's true. It would be Riley Finn from Buffy. He would definitely have been January 6th thing and up. It depends. It depends on the intervening events, but I, I could see it. I can see a path where, yeah. where Riley winds up. But those time. college years, I my only decent episode, in my opinion, was the Halloween episode when they were trapped in that haunted house and they like became oh. there. There's a few great episodes. There's the beer bad episode. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Beer bad when she becomes like a cave. Yeah. Neanderthal yeah. and there's then... a few good ones it's it's yes do I actually you... like season four a lot yeah. uh, I think it's very underrated but it's do you remember the gross sexy one when they were like under the weird sex spell and I was like yeah oh, oh, of course I was yeah. like I don't want this episode this is bad beer bad this episode bad <laughs> relatable yeah um yeah anyway. yeah, yeah. Tandem. I also I mean I hate to say it but like I can also see Oz going down a path where he winds up in J6 so you know he was very furious at his circumstances, and rightfully so. I don't know if I would want that. That's not a fun legitimate <laughs> economic anxieties. He was, he was very upset. He was angry. He had anger issues because he was a werewolf. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, I was thinking about the share song, and it was one of those things where I was like, "Oh yeah, that's that's the new share song." Like I still, <laughs> I still. Of it is mm-hmm. like, oh, that's new share. Mm-hmm. Uh, the same way that I think of that fucking U2 album that came out in like 2001 as the new U2 album. And is I that will the always. One, the vert- was that Vertigo? No, that was. No, Vertigo. before that, it was the like the, the 9 11 album, the like all that you can't leave behind, you know, the oh, stuck in a moment, you know, Did beautiful that have day. Sweetest thing on it. Sweetest, uh, yeah, sweetest thing. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that song though. Yeah, it's great. It is great. Um, oh, no, actually, I think Sweetest Thing. I think Sweetest Thing came out as part of the Greatest Hits album that was between that and the Vertigo album. But yes, around the same time. Um, Yeah, I... Okay, so it's... (laughs) So 25 years since Cher uh, had her new album. Believed in life after love. (laughs) She was not young, not old for like an artist anymore. Like that's that's a normal age. Uh, Mm -hmm. And now she's 77, which is also just like not not old, honestly. She could be president. Dusty Springfield. 
uh, dies the same day of breast mm. cancer at the age of 59, which is just feels like, young too. It's incredibly young. That was in the news today as well. Breast cancer. Olivia Munn just had a, I double, know. Had a double mastectomy or maybe yeah. not just because wasn't she just I mean, at the It's good like, for her, Oscars? the right thing to say, because like it seems that she had- She was just she, at the Oscars. I didn't read the yeah. article. Did she have this double mastectomy after the Oscars or was this I like a, an announcement before, well after? I think, it, I think it was like this past week or um, so, like, uh, but yeah, it's, it's but all she, sort of happened. But like, she had, look, I'm not trying to be a creep, but she definitely had breasts at the Oscars. <laughs> so it might've been today. It might've been like- Yeah, the, or it yeah. was a late, like a later gram. Like uh, I did this like six months ago. Right, 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 right. I didn't read the piece, yeah. but yeah, uh, breast cancer's also in the news today yep sadly um of course dusty springfield is significant to the era because five years earlier dusty springfield had a like resurgence of popularity with generation x because of the pulp fiction soundtrack where mm-hmm. the Preacher man became uh like a major hit uh among among a certain group of people in college dorms and that sort of thing um in the era but no boys. Dusty springfield fucking ruled you mean boys a certain group of boys sure it was either yeah. that or a scarface poster that was <laughs> no it was it's such like, it's such a good fucking song and just it's a good song and it's an incredible soundtrack and, and it's a great movie and yeah yeah a single foot was filmed in that movie who knows it when. just it just feels like 50 I, I can't believe she was only 59 it just it even felt like by the 90s she'd been around forever and that she was sort of a she had because was son of a preacher man in the 70s or the 60s because she also is because dusty springfield yep it was like 65 so she uh let's let's think about that then so it's 99 she's so 34 she years 40 so yeah she would have been in her 20s yeah that makes sense yeah, when that when that song came out, um, that's yeah, it sucks. Anyway, elsewhere in music uh, that week, we have not a lot, but we have two live albums that came out uh, that week for some reason. Uh, one for Madness, one of my favorite bands of all time, and the second album from Tonic. They released a live album, wow. but before they oh my god, stop. Game, is it just a live album of their first? Album? It's just like if you could only see nine if times live. <laughs> That's a great song. I'm sorry, it's a great song. Maybe you would understand. Fantastic. Uh, they've had they had a couple of minor hits after that. Like "Open Up Your Eyes" was 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 yeah. relatively okay. But like "If You Can Only See" is a great. Song. Who do you think he's singing to in that song? He's singing about another woman. Is he singing he it is. to a to a friend to a different woman? No, it's to like... a parent, right? Like it's 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 a it's a parent who doesn't approve of their of their of their relationship. Oh, right? I don't know. I've never really thought of the lyrics. Me, maybe to understand, like uh, you know, right? I think possibly. I mean, I guess it depends on how old he was when he wrote that. Like, is he thirty? <laughs> or I guess a really dickish friend. Like, what are we like, doing, like girl? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Here's what your parents think. I always thought it was like a Romeo and Juliet thing where it's like, if you know, like the parents disapprove and, mm-hmm. you know, if you could only see the way she loves me, then you would understand why I feel this way. Uh, and now, hold on. Her love. He's yeah. doing a love is blind there. Now, I don't remember the rest of the song. <laughs> Maybe he goes into the other reasons why he loves her. But in that line, he's just being like, I love her because of the way she loves me. And it's like, OK, but. Does she have like any hobbies or interests or like, is she funny? Is she smart? Is there, tell me more. No, she just loves you. Fantastic. (laughs) I hate this. It's a good song. It is a good good song, song. but yeah. And then for, for some reason, the second you said tonic, my brain went, Oh, let's count blue cars with dishwalla. Like now. Nope. Different band, but I like know. Same I know. Band. I just like, said Dishwalla. Like, I feel like there's. These I know bands. it's a different band. <laughs> there's these bands that, like, I feel like they could just sell their songs to another band, and no one would know the difference. Like, just if you're a one hit wonder, just acquire the songs of other one hit wonders for money. But they don't know, and just the pretend time. that you wrote them. You know what I mean? They don't know at the time. They're like, this is just one of many hit wonders. Yeah, they they think they hope. Yeah, or they become. Like Simple Minds, whose greatest hit is right. not even a song they wrote. No. Yeah. Yikes, my guy. Yeah. Or or even Soft Cell, right? Like uh, no, what's no, hold on. What's the song? Is it oh, it's because they go into Baby Baby, where did my love go in the Soft Cell Cell song? That's what I'm thinking of, right? Like uh-huh, so they, do they do the, a little, they do a little dip. They do yeah, a little they do a little dip. They do a little um, a brief cover. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> towards the is that end. Diana Ross? Is that no? Is that yeah? Yeah, it's the, the Supremes, yeah, the right? Supremes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, March the fifth. A oh, this is a good day at the box office. This was this is this is three pretty big movies all coming out the same mm. day. Uh, Cruel Intentions. Mm. Analyze this. Speaking and the, of both. And the American release of Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. All Wait, did you out. say analyze this? Yeah. That movie is 25 years old. 1999. Yep. Do you feel like that's true? Don't you feel like that movie was like mid to mid 2000s or something? Does that feel uh, 25 years old? Old? I think because Analyze That came out a couple of years later that we sort of put Maybe. it into the 2000s that sort of crosses over, I think. Because it's like the same thing with almost The Matrix, right? Where like the two sequels came out in 2003. But that feels so it very 99 in because the 2000s. it's, you know. Yeah, I know. Okay, I, know. I just had a sad thought. That means that cat is probably no longer with us. Oh, I don't God. think so. I don't think so. God, that's sad. Okay, continue. Um, analyze this obviously is important because uh, the premise of it uh, just happens to be basically the same as uh, a show that we've already talked about that debuted in January, which is The Sopranos. Uh, and in fact, uh, during during development of The Sopranos, um, David David Chase or Simon, which one is it? Chase, I think Simon's the I, is a procedural is guy, the, isn't he? Is the wire. David Simon's the wire. Yeah, David he sucks. He's a, he's very shitty, and everyone locally in Baltimore is like, "Fuck off, you." That's good writing. Dumb, dumb. Uh, David Chase, uh, <laughs> while he's writing this, the the uh, the Sopranos, um, finds out that analyze this is in development, and it's like, oh shit! <laughs> oh my god, what a heartbreaking. I mean, he's still, <laughs> he's still you know got it got it done, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But how heartbreaking would that have been? Well, even funnier, when he was writing it, he envisioned Tony Soprano as Robert De Niro. So do you think that the like the the part with the therapist that played a larger role in the show before Analyze This came out and then he kind of like she was still in it obviously, but I'm wondering if um, maybe we had more frequent <clears throat> visits and then he was like, "Fuck, I got to pull this back a little bit." I don't think so because David Chase had two had two like you got to be fucking kidding me moments with that with that show. One of which was that the title of the show originally was Family Man, and he had to change it to The Sopranos because of Family Guy, mm -hmm. which came out the same weekend. Um, so I, I think he always envisioned it as this thing where it's like a family drama and a family drama. And also, they're like the the psychology part of it as like, but by in season two, they 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 make a reference to analyze this. There's a joke about analyze this That's in season fun. two, where he's talking to Lorraine Bracco's character, and there's something about that movie coming out, and he makes some kind of like disparaging remark about it, which is which is quite funny. But yeah, it was always um, on his mind, and so the fact that the Sopranos got out the gate before analyze this is really important to dispel any idea that it was like. Um, you know, sort of capitalizing on the success of that movie. Um, but yeah, analyze this: Harold Ramis, uh, Robert De Niro, Billy Crystal. One of the great, one of the great American comedies. I love that yes. movie. I think it's fantastic. So um, we will get to it eventually. And then Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Um, Guy Ritchie's debut, his feature film. What uh, a what a what a debut! Still his best. Whoa. Mm -hmm. I a country mile. <laughs> what's his what's his second best movie, do you think? It's not the one where I can't understand a single thing Brad Pitt is a saying snatch. the yeah. entire time where I'm like, honey, this accent is you like too that? good. Um, are you gonna watch The Gentleman? That just came out on Netflix. It's a series I that will. he did. I will, yes. Yeah, yeah. Based on the movie that he did, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah, yeah, I will. I, I so here's the thing. I fucking I hate I hate I have no I I have no justification for this whatsoever. I hate Theo James. I hate <gasps> him. What? Even in it makes me angry. Just even like in White Lotus? Name. No, I love him in White Lotus because okay. I hate him in White Lotus. He's barely there. Okay. He's a fucking yeah. asshole. And I'm like, something about that guy is so unappealing to me that I just like I can't I just hate yeah. it. I hate his presence entirely. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna say I'm looking at his filmography because I've I have a bad memory. I always have to yeah. get look at a filmography. I think this is not gonna be a popular choice, but I'm just gonna say Sherlock Holmes. Okay, yeah, sure, yeah. Those are but great. a lot of that's because Downey, Robert Downey Jr. is just a sure. goddamn and good. Char is they're, good. They're, they're so fucking good and charming they're in great. it. But like, yeah, I do think that's probably the one I like after that because you know I think of Guy Ritchie as so prolific, but he does not have a huge. No. no. 
I'm very surprised by this. In my mind, he's just always been here. And some also were- married to Madonna or just, yeah. were they married or just together? They were, oh, they were married for quite some time. Because that's where she got her accent for a little bit. And then you're like, <laughs> you're like, lady, that's silly. Oh that's- my God, stop. <laughs> That's very so do that. Uh, no, that's a good choice. I I, I love snatch, um, but I understand. Well, we'll so isolate I that sentence. <laughs> like, Sorry, we're gonna isolate that sentence. Listen, that's why it's love, called that. Love you know? snatch. Yep, <laughs> I will stand by that. I will stand by that. Um, <laughs> Good choice, though. Sherlock Holmes are good movies. I'm sorry. I'm an adult lady. Yeah. I know you are. Uh, am I? I don't know. It's hard theory. to say sometimes. Um, so, yeah, I'd say that would... <laughs> many times over, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also March the 5th, actor Richard Kiley dies at the age of 74. Kiley, of course, is probably most famous to Gen Xers as the voice of the Jurassic Park interactive CD-ROM. That's the right. Alex loses we all know the goddamn that. shit over. <laughs> we all know it. We in all Jurassic know Park, it. Spared no expense. Richard Kiley was a great, great, great actor of stage and screen, but later in his life, he used his very, very, very distinct voice uh, to do a bunch of uh, voiceovers for uh, History Channel and Nat Geo and those sorts of things. And when Jurassic Park came out, it was a bit of an in joke um, that he was kind of, you know, in sort of the same way that Peter Coyote is, right? A guy who is known. Um, as the documentary voiceover guy. I think Richard Kelly did a bunch of the, um, like when Biography first started airing, mm. I think he was the voice of Biography for a lot of those episodes. Uh, so when he is the voice of the interactive CD-ROM in Jurassic Park, The Way of the Future, uh, it was a quite a funny joke, but he died uh, a few years later, unfortunately, at the young age of 75, 74, mm. on March the 5th. So... Uh, but a very accomplished actor and a, and a, and a great actor. Um, and then lastly on my list uh, is the big one. March the 7th, uh, director Stanley Kubrick dies at the age of 70 in his sleep. In of his sleep. A heart attack. Um, now, of course, and we'll, we'll talk more about this later, but of course, this is the, the genesis of a great deal of dumb conspiracy theory nonsense about Stanley Kubrick and moon landings and all sorts of um, silliness. Uh, so partly because of the subject matter of his final film, Eyes Wide Shut, which would premiere several months after the death of mm. Stanley Kubrick. Uh, people are like, oh, he died because he knew too much about the Illuminati or whatever. Um, again, I'll talk about this more later on. The guy was a chain smoking, yeah. <laughs> like unhealthy man who yeah. was very obsessive about his work and is the sort of person who is a great candidate for dying of a heart attack at the age of 70. So like not actually entirely surprising yeah. but and like there's no way that he filmed the moon landing because that was done so well <laughs> as a notoriously shitty director sorry i don't know how else to put it everyone's like he obviously did it i was like what i don't think so i didn't see malcolm mcdonald on that planet <laughs> i don't think so uh, what's funny and what's so like, because, you know, I, I, conspiracy theories are a big, I like, this is my master's thesis was on conspiracy theories. Like, God, conspiracy theories. What a nightmare. Are, what a nightmare are, that must have been. They're, they're, they're a big thing for me. What's really funny is that his daughter is a giant conspiracy theorist. She is often on Alex Jones, right? She, she is, she's a fucking lunatic. But she is like, no, my father did not fake the moon landing. Like it's so funny about conspiracy theorists that Does she they think are... the moon is hollow though? Does she have any like no, weird, she thinks like... it's all fucking real? That's like not one of her conspiracy theories because it involves her father. And it's so funny, like it's so telling the way that conspiracy theories are so just sort of like molded to the people who want to embrace them and when it doesn't suit your narrative you're just going to be like no that one's bullshit <laughs> it's like oh, okay yeah. well that's religion <laughs> that's you know so everything it totally is <laughs> everything's a buffet just take what you like and leave the rest 100 percent. And... yep you got wow. it oh, we should yeah we should definitely talk more about that i didn't know that you were an, i was talking to a conspiracy theory expert let's dip our toes into those waters then because i <laughs> feel very much that i i avoid that because i'm like no thank you 
I am. Uh, I'm currently writing something about um, Stanley Kubrick and the Matrix mm. and the way the 1999 uh, shaped conspiracism, and we will do a little episode about that coming yeah. up later. Uh, yeah, but anyway, Stanley fun. Kubrick, pretty good at making movies. Some some good ones in his in his arsenal uh, in his 70 years, and uh, it is fucking. Look, I'm not going to tell you it's not weird that he died the year that like this movie came out, or and that he literally like finished like wrapped and then like was like went to bed and died um yeah it's fucking weird sure absolutely but like, the guy literally was like a perfectionist <laughs> very very high strung notoriously high strung uh chain smoker who like put tom cruise through hell uh in his last act oh no life. so you know maybe some of that's deserved given his... well yeah I, sure but like making someone walk through a fucking door like 170 times or whatever <laughs> Just I don't know. I, I feel like Tom Cruise is a good. Tom Cruise is a perfectionist. He probably loved he it. He is. Probably ate They're it both, up. Ate it up. He was like, anything you want, notes. Stanley. One more time. Uh, no, yep. I don't want the sugar glass. I want. I don't want the sugar. Nicole, I want the real Nicole thing. Nicole Kidman is the one I feel bad for in this scenario. To be honest with you, for a lot of reasons. Her heart. Her heart. Her heart broke at a place like that. I don't know. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That was a pretty good Nicole Kidman. I, no, I don't That's know what that, that. No, well, the, I, that was an Australian accent. Unfortunately, that's such a hard accent. You well, can't. Well, she doesn't have one though. She has know, this weird, like American. Something. It's the Mel Gibson accent. It's the like, where are we from? It's like the exactly. Mid Atlantic, the old fashioned <laughs> Mid like, Atlantic accent. Like Mr. Feeney, uh, but slightly more. Yes. You know, Yes, it's the William Daniels accent mm -hmm. in Atlantic. Every, anyway, when you, when you need to make a call just like this, I'd like <laughs> circle, Mr. circle, case, Mr. Matthews. Mr. Yeah. Matthews. Mr. Matthews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, anyhow, that's March 1st through 7th. Yeah. Now, I went in a little different direction this time. Of course. Yeah. I did March 8th through 15th, and I found some, like, you know, what, what some would consider, like, bigger stories i guess but then i was like i just kind of tried to find random stories that were not necessarily big super newsy items mm -hmm. so some of these are silly some of these are so here we go march 8th 1999 this is from the washington post uh this i don't this this isn't conspiracy theory related but i'm sure somebody has cracked <laughs> some, some conspiracy theories around timothy timothy mcveigh <gasps> Oh, so, yeah. Okay. On, on this day in 1999, yep. the Supreme Court rebuffed an appeal. This is quoting from the Washington Post by Timothy J. McVeigh, who yep. claimed that his conviction for the 1995 bombing of a federal office building in Oklahoma City that killed 168 people was tainted by pretrial publicity and juror prejudice. I would argue it was tainted by the 168 people he killed and the fact <laughs> that he confessed. So it's hard to say. Now, yeah. So, he noted that a month before his trial began, the Dallas Morning News uh, published an incendiary article. Now, was that a pun? I don't like that. An incendiary I article. I don't think it is, but it's well, a bad choice of words. I'm a little nervous. Saying that he told his lawyers that he alone bombed the Alfred B. Murrah building and then he wanted a body count intended to get a point across to the government. That was I was the bomb. I did it. And now he's like, hold on. I think people have the wrong idea about me. And I'm like, uh. And then a few weeks later, he was... <laughs> It, this was magnified when Playboy magazine. Okay. Yep. Published a piece saying McVeigh purportedly had confessed to his lawyers. And basically the Supreme Court was like, uh, okay, we'll hear this, but we're, we're this obsessed weirdo confessed to his crime. So we're still going to um, kill you in a couple of years. And they did. Yeah. I, don't, I don't believe in the death penalty. Me either. But I also know that if something horrific happened to a person I love deeply, I would leave the door open for reconsideration with <laughs> I'm not enough. an idiot. I'm I'm never going to say Yeah. I'll never say never as they say. Yeah. I do know that to be true. I don't believe in it, but boy oh boy, be curious. No, I don't be curious. I don't want to put that in the universe. I'm not curious. I don't want to know what would happen if somebody I love died. Okay. Would it would it surprise you that I wrote a paper about Tim McVeigh and the death penalty uh in college for an aesthetics class? No. <laughs> Did you talk about his brush cut? <laughs> Big fan. No, no. It's uh, I actually. So it was really interesting. We were talking about the idea that um, cultures exist or sort of employ this idea of like of like of like dirt 
mm. within their culture. And that one of the ways you can understand the sort of moral um, reasoning of a culture is what it considers to be like unclean and the thing that it wants to like rid itself of. Oh. Um, yeah, so it was actually, it was a pretty interesting topic. And yeah. uh, I wrote that the week that Timothy McVeigh was executed. So this was... Uh, I think God, 2001, it been, was it? Yeah, 2001. Yeah, it was, like yeah. Pre, it was just post 9-11. Mm-hmm. Um, or that must have maybe pleased just him. Pre, it was around, like, but no, it was post. It was post. It was that like... must have made him happy. A one or a two. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah, McVeigh. That's a thing I did. <laughs> well, you know, he was very busy jerking off to Waco um, and probably Ruby Ridge, I believe. Those yeah, no, people. he fucking sucked. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to, but but I also oh, no. like, but I don't, I don't think the government should kill people. Absolutely uh, not. The, the no, 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 no. Uh, let's see. March 8th, still Joe, Joe DiMaggio died. Where have you gone, gone, Joe Joe DiMaggio? DiMaggio, Our nation's turned to sleep. Just as our late nation was turning its lonely Lonely eyes eyes to him, he's like, I'm out. Fun fact, I was singing the Lemonheads version. I was singing the Lemonheads version. (laughs) I was not singing the original. You didn't have to confess that. You could just, (laughs) nobody would have known. Uh, Ding, 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 ding. Okay, the version from from Wayne's World 2. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. From his obituary in the Washington Post, they said, Dem- this is like, uh, this, I'm, this is just who he was in case someone's like, I've heard the name. DiMaggio became fixed in the American culture because of his talent and grace as a player for the New York Yankees, especially for his 56 game streak in 1941, for his always modest behavior and the <laughs> elegance with which he, yeah, he, they were like, we'll get there. The elegance okay. with which he led his life on and off the field for his brief but highly publicized marriage to Marilyn Monroe and his right, enduring right. love for her, of which he would never speak. Now, I do believe he got a little handsy grabsy with her um, at one point. There was like rumors of like, you know, a, some bruises on her. But I do know that she was like he was one of the people that she called when i can't remember who broke her heart probably arthur what's his balls was that after dimaggio arthur miller i can't remember the order of arthur miller it was arthur arthur miller yeah i know that at some point like she and i know that he really his heart he was crushed when she died he was crushed when she died what sucks about marilyn monroe other than everything that happened to her and everything she lived through is the people who I'm always I, I when someone's like I love Marilyn Monroe I see that as a huge red flag because I think they love her sure. for the wrong reasons and I don't just mean men being skeevy I'm just like you know I I think it's important to also just like recognize and acknowledge you know her drug problem and what she had to endure yeah. but people are very weird about Marilyn Monroe I just saw something actually I think it was even this week some sort of AI Marilyn Monroe and oh god I yes yeah yep. and I think yep. I tweeted and I was like let this woman rest and I mean this like I know let this woman rest people are very fucking weird about Marilyn Monroe mm-hmm. and and what's hilarious not hilarious is that this is what she struggled with in life and they are just shitting on her over and over again by still not like respecting her it's very uh, whatever uh marilyn Rose. somebody write a paper about that yep. it's already out there yep. 10 times over 20 times over yep. okay i think am i still on march 8th? <laughs> now we're gonna get now we're getting into weird and goofy uh this is the new york post on this day congress was trying to pass a bill about Endless subscriptions, junk prize, and solicitation. So people whose oh, parents yeah. were yeah, suckered yeah, yeah. by glip- glitzy sweepstakes told Congress horror stories of yeah. trash bags with all of these subscriptions. And then they, I, I took two stories, one of them. Patty, this is an insane last name. I don't even know if I'm going to say McElligot. <laughs> Okay. Sure. Patty McElligot recounted how her father-in-law, Joseph McElligot, ordered $53,335 worth of books and magazines, including five separate subscriptions to Time. I know, I know this. And 32 subscriptions need- to U.S. News and World Report. This is my favorite line. All of which expire in the year 2018. Yes. So six years ago this ended. Were the McElligots <laughs> still getting this? I don't know. So Where are they? Times. Oh my God! Where are yeah. they now? The McElligots, oh, just piles and piles of U.S. News and World Report, and, unless that yeah. I maybe mean, was even still around as a publication by 2018. I don't know. Yeah, they could they uh, have predicted yeah, that, that everything would be digital. They couldn't have known. Um, yeah. and then let's see. 
Oh, and this is very funny. It, same thing. Uh, March 9th, top executives from Time Inc., Reader's Digest, American Family Enterprises, and Publishers Clearinghouse, Ed McMahon, well known and trusted <laughs> next to Benjamin Ed McMahon. That's right. Ed are McMahon. expected <laughs> to tell a different story, reminding Congress, this is what they said, that, and I quote, a fool and his money are soon parted. Oh, oh Ed. Assholes. No. Ed didn't say that, but no. yeah, but like, what assholes? Like, speaking of Jurassic Park, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Like, come on. People think that the Nigerian prince scamming your parents via email is like new, but like, all they had to do was look at the back yeah. page of Newsweek and it was the same fucking thing. <gasps> or if you're me, what is it? A penny CD? What the hell was that? What 5,000 CDs from Columbia House for a penny? Columbia House. Columbia House. I felt we And all then fell for every that. successive CD was $19,000 and it was impossible yep. to unsubscribe. Yep. Yeah. We all fell for that. We all fell for that. We're all, we are all made of stars. <laughs> all of us. It's the same thing where it's like sign up, like oh. do the seven day free trial of like, you know, f- Fluvium Plus or whatever, so you can watch this goddamn movie and then yep. forget to unsubscribe. Listen, same thing, same scam. Just never stops. T- just today, I had to. I was dinged thirty dollars for Dallas Morning News because I probably read some fucking what thing fuck? or some article I was writing for work and forgot to cancel my stupid trial. Uh, yeah. So, and I called them and I said, I said I'd like to cancel this. Also, you just charged me thirty dollars. Is that for one month? And they go, yes. And I said, I'm sorry. $30 a month for the Dallas Morning News. And they goes, well, it's the best <laughs> local news. And I said, yeah, for Dallas. Dallas. <laughs> and I'm sorry if there's anyone from Dallas listening, but y'all Can know I... that the only thing you have to write about is remember when John <laughs> Kennedy was getting, I'm like, yes, we all do. Especially John who had to remember write about it. Remember when there was it. a whole TV show about this? Uh, and also I... involved, oh no, it was that Dynasty. Who shot JR? Was that Dallas? That was Dallas. That was Dallas. Who shot JR? Who shot JFK? Who could have predicted Dallas. both of these would be unanswered questions? Hate, that's why it's called Hate City. Listen, mm. I, this is a funny story. I have canceled the New York Times twice. Oh my God. I and mean, I'm still getting it. From, so, oh, for, but no, are, listen, they char- are they charging you? Don't they are not. <laughs> <laughs> but I, Shit. but the reason that I canceled is that I, I don't have time to read the physical paper anymore. No. So I used to get the weekender, right? And so I get the weekend, like the weekend, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I get the uh, the digital thing, right? So I use the digital thing and I cause to read articles and play, you know, the games, whatever. Sure, Wordle and so or like whatever. a year and a half ago, I got online with an AI bot. Which is the only way that you can cancel the New York Times. And I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, there's no other way. And so I was like, and so I said, I I reasoned with this person. And they were like, (laughs) they were like, well, we have a special deal right now where like if you can just get Sunday for this price for the next year. And I was like, okay. Sunday is the one that like if I'm gonna read it all, I'll do it. So like it was like cheaper to like get Sunday and the digital than just the digital with this like deal. And so I was like, fine, I'll do that. So they lowered my price and then just kept sending me the Friday, Saturday, Sunday okay. for like a year. Good. And I was like, and I said to Courtney, I'm like, I I, a, I just keep throwing these away. I can't. I I need to get rid of them. And so I got back online and I was like, I need to just have the digital one please don't talk me into anything else again i just want digital new york times so i can do fucking spelling bee in the crossword and and read the occasional article without being fucking charged for it and they were like great sure no problem and then they were like here's so we're going to make that adjustment for you and here's how much you're going to pay and blah 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 still paying for the digital they still give me the fucking oh physical paper every friday can you that last donate? week they also gave me tuesday i don't know why <laughs> <I just did. laughs> maybe it was for super i'm tuesday? getting more newspapers than i used to before oh i you have to take this like, to congress you're they like, are like print media will live <laughs> you, <laughs> Whether you you're it gonna not. get it if you pay for it or not i don't <laughs> care uh, <laughs> oh so my God. Oh Anyways, uh, no. cheat code. If you want the New York Times, no. don't just ask to not have it and they will give it to you. It is. Regardless. It, it should be a crime that it takes one second to sign up for something online and an hour because you always have to like call them. Make that. 
the legislation. I know Biden's anything. like, I want kids and parents to fly together. And I'm like, you're in what? In planes that can't stay together? No, I, I'm less concerned about where the children are sitting and more concerned if the seats are still like bolted into the plane. Like, <laughs> Boeing is having a moment and I'm playing on fire. <laughs> I, when I watched that video of it shooting across the sky, I was like, this is lost. What is going on? This is crazy. It was very lost. I it's soon we're going to have, you know, the whole like more leg room option on JetBlue. It's going to be like plane, not on fire option. Yeah. Uh, or it's more leg room. Cause half the plane just fell off. And I'm like, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Whatever it takes. So I can stretch uh, out. Uh, what a timeline. Okay. Okay. A, a less fun but still goofy bill, the GOP introduced a bill that was aimed, and I quote, at barring First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton from running for the Senate in New York. Oh, I remember this. The way they were trying to make this happen was they were insisting that a candidate has to have lived in New York for at least five years to be elected <laughs> to the U.S. Senate or House. And New York had no residency requirement. Now, as we know, it didn't work. No, because you can't do that. <laughs> But it's like not I, how it know, works. They cheekily <laughs> called it the anti-Hill bill, which I was like, well, that's a little God, fun. So... Can you imagine being obsessed with a woman for that so, long? So it's important for people to hear this. This has been going on and before 99, of course. Oh, yeah. They have been, th it's just been decades of this. From it's the moment crazy. they met, <laughs> they were like, I'm going to, I hate this woman forever. And yeah, I, they could I, tell I, that she you. was pulling the strings for real, for real, and they were determined. God. Determined. God. And, but nevertheless, <laughs> anyway, nevertheless. Uh, okay, March 9th. Uh, now, this is interesting. Now, I didn't, I wish I had looked more into this. I don't think it went anywhere, but I just found this interesting. The first part's yeah. fine, but the next part makes me a little sad, and it's about someone we both like, and I'm bummed out about it. So here we go. Okay. Again, the New York Post. Liz Winstead, who helped to develop The Daily Show, and Brian Unger, oh one boy. of its four, it's okay, it's they're yep. fine, then it's yep. sad. And one of yep. its four former correspondents may launch a new parody of network news magazines. I don't think that ever happened. No. But here's the sad quote. Last year, Winstead left Comedy Central shortly after former Daily Show anchor Craig Kilborn made a crude joke during an interview. He said that despite their artistic differences, if Kilborn wanted, Winstead would perform oral sex on him. God. And with that, I feel Ooh. so bummed out about a guy I really love. Hated that. Hated yeah. to hear that. That's why she left. Maybe. The show, yeah. that's what it said. That's what I'm. I, know. I believe she told them that. So we got to believe her. And he yeah. said it in an interview. So it's got to be somewhere. That sucks. I she mean, created that show. Yeah. That was her I show. I know. Not a bummer. So I thought it was important to just, I don't know. Nothing ever came of this amorphous magazine network. But that that quote was the one I wanted. And I made, I felt sad. I mean, obviously, Craig Kilborn is a person people hate. Yeah. <laughs> for reasons yeah. so and like that's also like i mean the the fact that he's a fucking dick is like part of what made him so funny right and and yeah. of, of course of course that yeah I, like uh, yes i believe it right like yeah of course of course i believe that but um he was still really funny <laughs> I know he was. He was. I so liked funny. people who were assholes at the time. It was, was like so that was the vibe. He was the he '90s. Could not have been more sarcastic and dry. In a way, no. and it makes sense. Like I, I think this is also why I like Joel McHale so much. I find them to be, and then of course like Vince Vaughn. Like these are all in the same vein. That dry, yeah, sarcastic, kind of semi shitty all the time. Fella. Well, Joel McHale is 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 Craig Kilborn with a conscience, right? Like yeah. I think he's a little more playful. He's a little sweeter, but yeah, like very sweet. Yeah. Sweet. I, I've but, never heard anybody say a bad thing about him. No, but like, he's like very sarcastic, and I love absolutely. Him. I appreciate right, right. that that delivery very much. And again, coincidentally, also very tall. Uh, hosted yeah. Talk Soup. So you know. he did. It's again, yeah. Greg. Where's call, calling paging Greg Kinnear? Paging Greg, Greg Kinnear. Kinnear. Yep. Had that that um, same like dry sense of humor. Paging Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman. Sorry. <laughs> God, he was so good in that show. Greg Kinnear, Talk Soup. Jesus I Christ. Know. I the love best. Talk Soup. <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> this is 
very random, but I just think it's okay. an interesting sign of the times. This is yep. from the Wright State University paper. I do not know where Wright State University is. My Greg, you're listening. My person, <laughs> he knows a lot about colleges. He's probably it like- sounds fake. <laughs> I know exactly where it is. Yeah, it's right with a W, thank God, like a last name. Like, okay, all right. Like the Wright right. Brothers. So like, maybe this not, is in- it's not, it's not Barry Maybe Weiss. this is in North Carolina. <laughs> no, it's not Barry Weiss. It's just didn't start a college. All right. Uh, they are called The Guardian. That sounds okay. even worse. And they published a piece titled Feminist Ethics of Exclusion? Question mark. A professor thinks men in class hurt women's education. Okay. And I, and I think this is an interesting sign of the times. And it's like Boston College professor. Let's say Boston professor Mary Dale. Maybe this is about Boston College. Okay, whatever. Boston College professor Mary Daly has canceled a women's studies course she had planned to offer and taken a leave of absence rather than allow a male student to attend her class on feminist ethics. Now, I'm going to say something. Mary. Normally, I'd be like, fuck that guy. But Mary Daly's in the wrong here, because how else do we expect our boys to learn feminist ethics if we're not letting them in the class? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. She sure. offered to teach it, but only as an independent study, which is weird. That means he wouldn't get any credit for it. I don't understand what she's trying to accomplish. Very strange. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I just thought, what an interesting thing to be happening in 1999. And I don't know how yeah. I found this, and I don't know why I found it. Uh, is it news? Is it not news? I don't know. The, sure. I thought it was Well, I, I I mean, I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, it is an interesting, I mean, like, the 90s, we had the rise of so-called, like, political correctness kind of culture right and then like we've had in the in in the interim the whole like right-wing attack on mm. universities for like safe spaces and like all, and it, yeah i do think there was a lot happening with like college politics um yeah. and the ideas of like feminism and so on and so forth and like some of it was like again like people just being shitty <laughs> like that yeah. like it does happen right uh and but also just like not necessarily i don't know i i think that part of our culture is that like we're very bad at like understanding like whose spaces are whose and like mm. when it's good to like actually allow men to like take a class yeah. like you know because like what are what are they there for you know, I mean, like, I do think by 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 definition, in, uh, in theory, any class at a college should be open to yeah yeah any person sure. for sure. I think like creating a safe space has to happen in a way that's not like a public institution. <laughs> like yeah. it's like oh, it's like okay, fine, start a private class that you don't allow him to participate in. But this is a school; you paying to be there. You kind of got to. I don't know. I mean, unless right. it was you, you have to like. You let him in, and then if he sucks, you kick him out. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. Like they failed the class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's right. Yes, I, that, that's like uh, it's. I don't know. It, I, I mean, I, that was. I thought that was very interesting, and they and they got all, all the way to CNN, and they're using words that like language that I feel like I consider to be still like a recent addition to the vernacular. But they're like, yeah, a women's space, and they're saying something, something patriarchy. And I know that's been around <laughs> for a long time, but we hear it so often now that I'm sort of like I've become deft to the word patriarchy i'm just like yeah yeah, yeah but yeah. to see it it's, to yeah, see what if, if i read that out loud in a in a and didn't tell anybody it was in 1999 i think many people would be shocked to learn that that was something from 25 years ago have i told you my like women's poetry story no are we letting women be poets <laughs> Disgusting. Well, apparently we've been doing that for a long time, which is Ugh. mind blowing to me. Uh, yeah, uh, these that dumb was broads. Weird. These dumb broads. Right. want to be everywhere. So my second semester of my senior year of college, right? It's the I I have I have fulfilled all of my requirements. I'm going to take like all the classes I want to take. Right? Yeah, you're about to graduate. Burn -a -nur, I graduate. Burn -a -nur. And uh, I, there was this new po this new class in philosophy and politics that I really wanted to take that was just being offered, and I was and I got into it. And then right before it started, I got a I got a like email or call from the I don't, it's you know no, it's two thousand one, so who knows? Uh, some a communication fax. of some yeah, kind. Fax. I got a fax, <laughs> telegraph uh, that I I needed to fulfill an English requirement. And I was like, no, 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 I don't. I, I, I've got everything. I got it. So, so it turned out that there was like two different kinds of English courses 
that you had to like take two of each, I guess. And like one was like analysis and one was like writing, mm. whatever, right? So like they were like two different versions of English. And I and I I had done three of one and one of the other. And I thought it had two of each. And so they were like, you have to take one of these classes. Mm. And I was like, well, what's available? And they are like, the only one. <laughs> I guess it's like a, a, a day before classes okay. start. Like, the only one available is women's poetry. And I'm like, no. I'm like, no, no, no. And it's not the women part. I just hate poetry. Like, I'm yeah, not a poetry I, person. I don't like Fuck poetry. poetry. I don't like yeah. poetry either, except for I, one love poem. It, good for I you. like Emily Dickinson, which is predictable. And then one poem by Philip Larkin called This Be the Verse. Because it's, yeah, like, it's hilarious. I like- probably eight poems like sure fine guys sorry i'm a big stupid i'm a big (laughs) stupid dum-dum who doesn't get your word salad silliness so the the worst thing is that i had to take this class period and 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 it was the same time as the philosophy of politics no (gasps) now i really hate poetry (laughs) so i get into class the first day more like poetry go ahead I get into class the first day and it is me. There's like two other dudes who are very poetry dudes and like 19 female Ana DeFranco fans. Right. I'm not, I'm not mad about that, but yeah, I love Ana DeFranco too, but like I I, I did at the time, but they were all like, so the first day of class, they're all like Sarah, who is my professor was like, who is this like wonderful, you know, bubbly, uh, sort of butch lesbian right and i loved her she was great and she's like why y'all taking this class and all all these girls are like i love ani and i love sylvia plath and blah 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 blah." and i'm like great and poetry and i want to be a poet and like poet and they get to me and i stand up and i'm like my name's john i don't want to be here Mm. didn't want to take this class Mm. i have to to graduate there's a class i'd really rather be in i don't like poetry oh my god i like I like women fine, but Which I'm going to do my best. And I'm going to do my best, right? That's what I'm going to do. And I sat back down and I was like, I'm just going to be fucking blunt and honest about this. Yeah, you got to. But but I will say like, so so yeah. So that was one of those places where I'm like, this is not the space I'm supposed to be in. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, but Sarah and God bless her. She was great. And like, I really did try in that class. Like I really tried to like care and and invest and like be into it. And like, I hate Gertrude Stein and I had to learn all about Gertrude Stein. And I think she's bad. And like all of that. Um and I got an A minus in the class. Oh, and good. I and I got an A minus despite failing the midterm because she uh she actually she's she, I talked to her like months later because I was like, why did I get an A minus in the class? And she was like, You worked so hard on a class you hated. <laughs> and I was like, That's right. Oh <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. That's you. right. You got a participation yeah. trophy. I did. Well, I, to be honest, after I failed the midterm, which was really hard, and a lot of people did, it was a really hard midterm. After I failed it, I had to memorize a Sylvia Plath poem and recite it and analyze it like live on stage in the oh, class. That's and I fucking knocked it out the park. And she was really, really impressed. No. And she was like, I know you worked really hard in this class you hated. So yeah. um, I, I neglected your midterm entirely and wrote it off. Well, that's good. I mean, look, I, I I enjoyed the bell jar. I know that's not a poem. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of us read the bell jar and went, "Uh oh, I'm identifying a little too much here. I'm a little nervous." <laughs> I remember yeah. being like, "I think this is me." And how has no one told me? <laughs> Hated that. That was a that was a tough day for me. I was like, well, Can uh, I tell you one more thing? Speaking sure. of the nine and Sylvia Plath. Yeah. One. So I I recently we're going to talk about is this, this movie. about Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> It's not, but we're going to talk about this movie. We haven't, this is one of the big ones we have not talked about yet, which is The Iron Giant, which is a great movie. Oh boy. Vin I watched it. Oh, I watched it with my kids last week because they'd never seen it. And did you know, because I didn't, <laughs> that it is based on a book by Ted Hughes. Ted, Sylvia Plath yeah. killed herself because yeah. of. Yeah, my fucking Hughes. piece of shit. My piece of what because- the fuck? <laughs> It has to be so loosely based. So it is not at all it is loosely a, based. It is a one-to-one. It is one. very closely oh. adapted from the novel by oh, Ted Hughes I feel... called The Iron Man. 
and they changed the title because of Robert Downey Jr. Robert Jr. Uh, Downey Jr. He sued them. Yes. He said, "Listen, I'm Sherlock Holmes, and I'm Iron Man." When I saw Ted, I'm like, "What?" I'm like, "Can't be that Ted Hughes." No. And then I did some googling, and I'm like, "What the motherfucking hell is happening right now?" That is, <laughs> sh- I am stunned <laughs> to my core. So there you go. I've tied it back to. You our might as topic. well tell me, Mr. Frida Kahlo wrote that book. Diego Schmashman. Diego Rivera. That's Rivera. correct. Speaking of um, Iron Men. Yep. I believe this week the Paul Alexander, the man who lived for seventy years in an iron lung, he passed away. I was talking about this with somebody else, and I said it looks. And he was like, my friend was like, I think that looks really sad. I said, I don't know. I saw a picture of him laying down, drinking from a straw. It seemed like he was yeah. having a good time. Now, obviously, that's not what you really like. My, a crazy person. I know he would probably prefer to live. But then I couldn't stop thinking about and I didn't read anything about it. So perhaps the answer is out there. How how have how did we not figure this out for him? How was he not able to live outside of this iron know. lung? I just don't believe don't that's know. true. Maybe he is was just like the fuck big it. Big Jill and Hall movie Bubble Boy is about because I mm. I sort of I sort of maybe the answers are there. Some motherfucker gave him covid and he died. Like God, fuck to, you so hard. <laughs> that long to go that long to make it that long yeah i wonder if during the pandemic he was like welcome to my existence yeah. everyone yeah. I'm, I'm happy to shepherd you through this if you please don't anything. kill me if you need any unless help. it inconveniences you in any way in which case you can kill well, me you know yeah. if you want to know what it's like to just be trapped in one place i'm here to help Oh, if he had started a YouTube channel during that time, I would have been the first subscriber. I would have been like, yeah. Yeah. Give me some perspective. You've been doing a Dumb. much more intense version of this your entire life. <laughs> it's, true. it's true. Um, gosh, we have so much more to get. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Okay, keep going. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Uh let's see. On now, this is just this is just these next two things are just me being like it's weird to read about these things in 1999. Yeah. yeah. Uh March 11th 311 have, they were just they just did the tiny 311. Desk. They just did tiny desk to always celebrate. Fourth worst band. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but Nick Nick Hexum looking great. Yeah. Uh, okay. SBC Communications offered oh, faster know. you I and I felt very mixed up. <laughs> offered faster AOL. This is from CNN Money. America Online and SBC Communications said Thursday they have teamed up to provide high-speed America internet Online. access on the West Coast. What? Guys, are you excited? This is my favorite part. The technology yeah. will allow them to connect to the internet at 1.5 million bits per second. More Holy than, shit. More than 50 times faster than current 28,800 BPS connections. But here's the best sentence. The company said AOL customers also won't have to dial up every time they want to log in since DSL users are always Is connected. Is that even possible? <laughs> and AOL subscribers can be online and use their telephone or fax at the same time. Oh, my God. <laughs> What is That's this, right. the Jetsons? Jesus Christ. That's right, everybody. The wow. future is now. Are you having wow. Dippin' Dots? They're finally the, the ice cream of the future. It's today. Dippin' Dots. Hey, if, you, if you live in California, let us know how that's going for you. Let us know, guys. Great. Imagine using your telephone and the internet at the same time. And your facts. And your facts. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Isn't that funny to hear? It's very strange. It is funny. And it's then so- here's just one sentence I wrote, exclamation point, on the same day. <laughs> Audible and <laughs> Microsoft invested $11 million into Audible. And then I went, Audible was around in 1999? No, not possible. Different Audible? The internet said. It's the same Audible? Yeah, it's the same one. The books guy, people? Wow. It's crazy. I know. Wow. Good on for here? you, Audible. I know. Good job. Now, in Lewinsky news, because we're still... <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and there was actually some Lewinsky news that came out this week as well. Amanda Knox is getting the fictional adaptation treatment. <sighs> She's getting a series. Uh, sh- yes. um, Lewinsky's she producing is- it. Yep. Yeah, but and she's, she's being played by Andy McDowell Jr., which is That's cool. right, ADJ. Yeah. ADJ. <laughs> um, and, you know, I know Amanda personally, and uh, casting's fine. It's uh, fine. She looks, well, the problem with, with Amanda Andy Knox McDowell is Jr. Brown is that eyes. she looks like Andy McDowell and not Amanda Knox. Yeah, and Amanda Knox, if memory serves, has brown eyes. 
Sure. I know it shouldn't matter, but it matters a little bit. She's a good actor. I thought she, she's, she's she's a very good actor. Yeah. People like her in that cleaning lady numbers. show. Yep. It's very sad, yep. I hear. Yep. I have yes. So Lewinsky's book, which as a if anyone needs a reminder, it was a biography, it was written by Andrew Morton, who did Princess Diana's unauthorized biography. I think it was unauthorized. I can't remember. Yeah. It hit the number one. Hit number one on the New York Times bestsellers list as a reminder. That just means a lot of people bought it. That doesn't necessarily mean it's good. I'm so sorry. I don't want to be a weapon. Well, it doesn't even mean that. It can mean that a bunch of organizations bought it to give no, away for free. That I know as well. But yeah. whenever someone's like, oh my God, I'm a best selling author, I'm like, mm. Eh. I, not to be an asshole everybody i'm not saying that like but most of the time that doesn't i i wouldn't use that to judge whether it was not dan book. brown yeah the book is good you know what da vinci goes a good book sorry <laughs> i don't want to tell you i read it i loved it loved them both angels I mean, I and demons my, now yeah. this is like Bad. in a in an article this was in uh, probably new york post there was a quote from a woman who owns a bookstore i've been to many times in washington dc politics and prose Okay. Barbara yep. Mead, the owner, said things were slowing down a little bit for the book. She sold 32 copies the first week, six this week, and she called this book about Monica Lewinsky, and I quote, more of a mall book. Oh, God. Sick burn for Barbara Jesus. Mead of politics and prose. Wow. Yikes, my yikes. Now, also, like, sick burn against Walden books. Like, what the fuck? Come on. Quality. Sorry. Quality bookseller right there. I, I remember B- and B. Dalton. Yeah. Uh, so May 13th, 1999, I looked, I, I looked far and wide for any reviews about this. Couldn't find any. Maybe they weren't reviewing um, episodes of Saturday Night Live now the way they do. They were, uh, then the way they do now. But yeah, yeah. the host was Ray Romano and the musical guest was The Coors. What? That's I awesome. That's really oh, wanted wow. to to get a review on Ray Romano. I couldn't find one. That is peak ninety nine. I know the cores. Yeah. The cores. Yeah. Where did they go? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they're the Bud Lights now. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe so. That's a joke. Yeah. Okay. March fourteenth from the New York Post again. The headline: Gen X dopes. It's okay to snort smack. <laughs> I was really hoping this would end up being about ecstasy, but it was just club kids who are saying that, you know, shooting up heroin is the most dangerous thing you can do, but it's okay to snort heroin every once in a while. Oh, snort it. Yeah. Yeah, Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. They're all, it's all the rage in all the clubs. Apparently kids are going out to clubs in 1999 and just lightly and gently snorting heroin, which I was a club kid in 1999 and I don't recall seeing this, but that doesn't mean anything. Maybe yeah, it was it was it was still like uh, well, because it was still fairly recent at that point that heroin. I mean, was everyone was doing ecstasy right? in 1999. Yeah, or like or like out. Special K. Yeah, sure at, at clubs. Sorry, but like, I don't recall as, anybody as far as I remember, it wasn't until like the late 90s that you could even start heroin because well, like it was it was it wasn't it wasn't. Like the the grade of it wasn't high enough that you would be able to snort it and not die. Because remember that scene in like Pulp Fiction, right, where he like thinks it's, or she thinks it's coke, and then she snorts it and it's heroin, yeah. and she like yeah. right. Oh, yeah. And Eric Stoltz has to do the whole thing with the thing. It's uh, one of his finest performances. Absolutely, <laughs> not even kidding. <laughs> not even kidding. Uh, yeah, and and who's, it was, who's the oh, screaming oh, woman in the background again? It's also somebody funny. It was Arquette, Rosanna Arquette? Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, yeah, everyone was just basically saying it's everywhere. Everyone's doing it, but don't worry as long as we're not shooting up without even fully understanding that snorting is just the beginning and eventually you do usually end up shooting it up. I mean, maybe you can party. I just don't yeah. think I've ever thought of heroin as like a casual party drug. I've never done it. And I never will. No, but no. It's not, and again, it, it wasn't until it was it's like- highly addictive. Until it was- yeah, 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 yeah. And it wasn't a party drug at all until there there was a grade of it that was like readily snortable. And that again, that wasn't until like the late 90s. So yeah. I, 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 I feel like this is a thing where someone, I think it was like fairly recent that the phenomenon of like snortable cocaine or heroin was like yeah. available. And then, then some news agency is like, let's make it a, 
you know, moral panic. And let's do an the, informal the all, poll. And uh, that's just a crazy it. person at a club asking, do you do hair? Do you snort hair? Yeah. <laughs> but like, certainly like, like kids. <laughs> ketamine was, was like way, way, way. And like ecstasy yeah. was like way mm-hmm. bigger. Right. Yeah. And, and even like, acid people were doing yeah. acid, not shrooms. I don't think as much. Oh, I did some shrooms. I feel I like it. a lot of kids were also like, yeah, of course we snort heroin all the time. <laughs> you know, like Such a cause some thought. fucking jackass new york mm-hmm. post reporters coming to you like of course it's what you're gonna say just so, yeah you know, because you're yeah Anyways. so march 15th single sentence we don't need to know anything else okay marilyn manson is injured when he slips and falls during a i concert saw this <laughs> at the great yeah. western forum in Inglewood, uh, california yeah and i love to see it yeah I love more of that it. more yeah, like more, more from that series yeah. <laughs> Two different Marylands from Monroe to Manson. Wow, look at those bookends. That's pretty mm-hmm. good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Good job. So, there we go. Um, we should also say that uh I I guess I, I, I have to I have to mention the March twelfth movies because one of them is one we've covered. The Rage mm-hmm. Carry two came out March twelfth. I did see something about that. Um d- directed by enemy of the show, Cat Shea, uh, who correct. hates us. Sorry, and, Kat. Cat. Yeah. <laughs> and like this is just like a wild weird day at the movies as well because the rage carry 2 is far and away like the best movie to come out that day um maybe one of the worst movies of all time came out that day baby geniuses uh which is about talking babies and features the voices of kathleen turner christopher lloyd kim cattrall peter mcnichol Dom okay. Delaney's, I also like, think of that movie as more recent than 1999. I know, I know, I do too. I really do too. But it's not like it. Really, like it came. It's, is, this, it's, is this around the same I'm time? Going. What's that talking baby commercial? Like, no, it can't be the same. Right? It's not like like look who's talking. Right? Was like earlier than that. Yeah, but this, but this was, was like they were manipulating their mouths. They were doing. Yeah, look who's talking. Was like they CGI were just CGI babies. It was look who's talking was weirdly everyone weird. was psychic. <laughs> Maybe we could really read, babies could read the, each other's minds. Baby geniuses. Is We're gonna have to talk about this movie at some point because, like, oh, it is no. genuinely one of the worst movies ever made. Um, we should try to find a guest who was like considered a baby genius. Is there someone? And that's okay. all of us. Okay, that's all like of it. us from the eighties who were put like into a it. gifted and talented program, myself included. Well, fucking what we're bullshit. Just screened for every possible uh, uh, learning disability, as I was, and I was like, no, I'm just lazy. It's I'm lazy. I promise yeah. that problem uh we should there's there's also the corruptor uh which was part of the let's make chow yun fat an american uh movie star uh project that was happening between uh like the replacement killers in like 98 and then of course uh crouching tiger hidden dragon in 2001 uh chow yun fat and mark Wahlberg. uh also brian cox uh oh logan logan roy in that one uh the deep end of the ocean michelle pfeiffer treat williams Whoopi goldberg r.i.p yeah uh and of course the rage carry too and then wing commander uh i i made a an a, a, a point about well we're going to be talking about um our freddie prince jr and matthew lillard movie on uh monday friends friends different yeah. one but i made a i made a reference to them being um his his work mm-hmm. wife <laughs> they are cuties I, Matthew Lillard was definitely his work wife, right? Mm-hmm. He's like, I, gotta, I, gotta, I have to hey. believe they're friends IRL. Oh, they definitely are friends IRL. But he's like, hey, you making a movie? You want me to? You want me to see if I got anything? You want me to hang out? You want to? You want to? I can't believe it was Skeet Ulrich and not Freddie Prince Jr. and Scream. Just kidding. Skeet Ulrich was yeah perfectly cast. No, Freddie Prince Jr. was in the first Scream cash in movie. I know what you did last summer, which is mm-hmm. right. Yeah, he was with Jennifer Love and Ryan Philippe and his soon to be wife. Of SMG. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I don't is know. It Philippe, is it Phil okay? Can Ryan we Phil- I, think a, I think it's Ryan Felipe. I think it's Ryan Felipe. Can we just agree on how to pronounce that guy's last name? I think <laughs> it's Felipe. I think it is Felipe too. I've always said Philippi because I'm just like oh, that feels like a good Philippi match. Philippi feels like a, right too though. Like a marriage of Felipe and Philippe. And I'm like, Philippi just feels like okay, right. It's a good wheelhouse. I think it's fascinating that this guy was very famous and a big movie star for several years, and nobody knows how to pronounce his last name. 
and he was married to one of the biggest movie stars yeah, he of that the one 90s. Up. Cocked that one right up, I And bet. aughts, and cocked that up. But There's no way Reese Witherspoon what his last fucked name that is. Up. I don't know. What he, you know. For sure not. She is our queen. Absolutely we love not, her. Yeah. We stand at Reese Witherspoon. I mean, did you watch... There's a show that I got into. I don't think it's on anymore. It was canceled. It lasted two or three seasons, I think, or four. Big Sky. It sure. was a... Uh, what's his face? Michelle Pfeiffer's husband. Oh, David E. Kelly. David E. Kelly show, and it yeah. was it was a it was good. And if you're never gonna watch it, I don't mind telling you <laughs> that. Like they're like you know they 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 pulled a Hitchcock. They killed him off in like the first episode, or and I'm like, what? Felipe's gone. <laughs> <laughs> what am I watching this for now? That's why I'm here. Um. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so, what was the movie with him and Benicio del Toro? Which oh, Way really of the Gun. Good. That's it. That's a good movie. I loved oh, that movie. I saw it in theaters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me too. It's a good mm-hmm. movie. Well, gun. Ryan, hit us up. Yeah, Ryan, Let us know how you pronounce your goddamn last name. <laughs> Nobody knows. It's a mystery that we've been unable to solve for 25 years. Mm-hmm. What is your last name, sir? Who is in Cruel Intentions, etc.? We'll never know. We'll never know. Um, anyways... There we go. March 1st through 15th. Pretty fun couple weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, when you think about it. I think so. Mostly with the deaths. In like fun a death. lion. In like a lion. Uh, but our next episode intersects with the release of maybe the biggest movie of the year. So it's going to be fun to talk about that mm-hmm. one. March the 31st, 1999. We'll probably know what it is, but we will uh, We'll get to it. Anyway, we'll be back uh on monday and we'll be talking about she is all that a movie mm-hmm. that jen has different opinions about than she did years ago i don't know I what happened still have the same opinions something about, happened to me something happened. i think hey, i'm gonna rewatch it because i watched it because i time. thought we were you gonna watch it i i yeah i feel I, something was happening I was, I was going through I was going through something i need to come back to it really. focused on the matthew he Lillard really is the shine we're gonna talk about it we're not gonna talk about it he's the best we're gonna talk about it uh we'll be back on monday and until then enjoy love is blind after the rose and, uh, <laughs> and look out for frogs Where you got your reasons And you've got your lies And you've got your manipulation